Good afternoon and welcome back to Asgard and I had a request to do just a quick video showing off um, the new blocks and mechanics within Blood Magic and how they all work and everything. So um, with that said let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to cover is how to get wheel, demonic wheel. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is just craft yourself one of these or some of these rudimentary snares. I would suggest you make a few of these um, because for starters, you're going to need a few demonic will to get started. And then in addition, it's not always a hundred percent chance that it's going to happen. Um, the effect's going to take hold. And, um, so you want to have, you know, a few with you. So what you're going to do is throw these snares at a mob and you'll notice it's taking a few times and eventually they'll get these white particle effects. So if you kill them, you will get yourself some of this demonic wheel, which is great. Um, and you're going to, like I said, you're going to want a few of these. So I would suggest you get at least two or three to get started. And you do need some range between you and the mob because if you're right up on it, for some reason it gives the effect to you. <laughs> so, like I'm soul snared right now. Um, but you'll notice that these demonic wheels vary in quality. I'm getting some really bad quality ones. Bad luck. Um, I've got a .06 and a .46. These can range from pretty much anywhere between like .01, I guess technically, all the way up to about a 5 quality. And you will need um, at least one that is a quality of, it, um, of 1 or higher So um, in order to get started. So... Okay, there we go. So I've got one that's 3.63. That's great. Um, <clears throat> so now that you have that, the first thing that you're going to want to craft, of course, is your blood altar. I'm not going to go into the mechanics of that. It is going to require a demonic wheel, though. That's why you have to start out with the snares. And I would suggest that you use just your weakest one. Like in this case, I would use the .06 because the quality of that wheel doesn't matter when crafting the blood altar. Um, but your higher quality ones like this 3.63 um, are going to be very important moving forward. So next up, when you're starting Blood Magic, of course, you're going to have to sit here and stab yourself um, in order to build up blood in the altar. But what you can do is you can craft yourself one of these incense altars. And these are fairly easy to craft, but you are going to need to go ahead and get your blood orb in order to do it. Um, but once you have one of these, what you can do is you can just set it down. Um, starting out, you could just set it down next to your altar if you want. And if you get close to it, you're going to notice that your sacrificial dagger changes and you get a new graphic on both the thumbnail and the dagger in your hand. And so now what happens is if you stab yourself, you'll notice it goes ahead and it knocks me down all the way on health. But it does give you a bonus. Um, if we take a look here with the divination sigil, you can see that this has a bonus of 20%. So it's going to give you 20% extra um, essence <clears throat> or 20% extra blood in your altar. And um, that does scale, so if you have runes that increase the amount of all, uh, blood that you get from stabbing yourself, or from self-sacrifice, I guess is the technical term, it's going to increase those by 20% as well. So it all, um, you know, stacks together. But there is a way to upgrade um, this incense altar. Because if you notice, right now we have a current tranquility of zero. If we increase that tranquility, that's going to increase the bonus. So to increase your incense altar, you're going to need to put down a 3x3 three three of pretty much any block, any kind of building block, and put your incense altar on top of it. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to expand this out in each direction with a 3x3 three three made of wooden paths. So you'll notice right now that I have a tranquility of zero still, but if I put this last block in here, you're going to end up with a structure that looks just like that. And now if we take a look, our tranquility is now up to 424, and we get a bonus of 48%. So just putting down those wooden paths is going to increase that tranquility, or that bonus, by 28%. And by the way, these are crafted, you just need a blood orb, and you have to have at least a tier 2 blood orb, and um, then just some wood in order to upgrade that. Now in addition you can continue upgrading this up to a tier of four. Now, what you'll need is you'll need some of these stone brick paths, worn stone brick paths, and then obsidian brick paths. And these are crafted like this one's a tier three, this one's a tier four, and this one is a tier five. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to put down, say, the stone brick paths in a two by three, and um, you, can, you can stop with that. So if you want to... You know, if you're at a, say, a tier 3 altar and you want to upgrade this, you can put down your stone brick paths, just like this. 
And now if we take a look here, you'll notice that our tranquility bonus is up to 67% with a tranquility of 707. And then if we wanted to, we could put down a 2x3 of worn stone brick paths. And that's going to give us a tranquility now of 989 with a bonus of 88%. And then we can take it a step further, uh, one final step, and do obsidian brick paths which are now going to give us a tranquility of 1272 with a bonus of 109%. So you're getting 109% extra um, blood in your altar every time that you stab yourself. So it is quite a big boost, um, definitely worth doing. And then in addition, um, every expansion that you make on this increases the range that it's active. So this is now, um, you know, with just the 3x3 three three, uh, wooden paths, you know, it covers... Um, this 9x9 nine nine area, and then you have a 13x13, 13 13, and then a 17x17, 17 17, and then a 21x21 21 21 area. Now, in addition to doing the paths, there's other things that you can do to increase your tranquility. So, one thing that we can do is we can place blocks of water around this. So, just that 4x4 four four of water has now boosted it to 122% with a tranquility of 1464. You can also do lava. So four more blocks of lava. Now we have a tranquility of 1676 with a bonus of 135%. You can also do crops. So I just put down five seeds and now we're up to 1909 with a bonus of 14 or 148%. And if we put down some netherrack, we are now up to 2043 with a bonus of uh, 156%. And then if we wanted to, we could even catch that netherrack on fire and get ourselves up to 2146 with a bonus of 162%. You can also do pretty much any kind of plant life, that sort of stuff. Um, fire, water, just all sorts of things can be used to upgrade the tranquility in your area. Now keep in mind that if you were to say just fill all of this up with water, you are going to get diminished returns. Um, and you know, after so long it's not even going to be worth putting um, that item down. So you kind of have to put down a variety of things and not just a bunch of one thing. And in addition, as you expand this, like this is going to be a 21 by 21 that you can fill all this open area here with tranquility boosting things and keep boosting that tranquility. Now, in addition, this can be, um, this can go up. So for example, the wooden paths, you could make the stone brick paths uh, a level, uh, one level higher or lower than the wooden paths and so on and um, you know they're still gonna count and this is gonna count things um, that are you know below or above by a few um, below or above the wooden paths so um, you know for example crops are technically um, one space above these wooden paths but it's still counting them and so on so now if we were to take our sacrificial dagger and run over here and get the boost from it if we were to stab ourselves that gave us 3,046, well, it's, it's draining because it has like a, a buffer kind of thing, um, but it's draining a little bit, but we got over 3,000 life points for a single stab, and then, um, of course, you could keep boosting this um, tranquility, and you could also um, continue boosting um, by use of the runestone uh, as you build out your altar. So next up, the Hellfire Forge is probably going to be the next step that you want to take. Um, it's fairly cheap to craft. It is going to require a little bit of iron and a piece of gold, um, but overall not too bad. And what you're going to want to make first is your first Tartaric Gem, which would be a Petty Tartaric. And the way this is going to work is you're going to need something with wheel in it. It can either be a Tartaric Gem, because those are used to store wheel, or it can be just one of these demonic wheels, like the raw ones that we were getting earlier. And you're going to put it in there with some redstone, gold, glass, and lapis. And the way this works is you're going to put, you can just um, shift-click all this stuff in there. It's going to go in the corners. And then when it comes to the wheel, you're going to want to look here at the recipe arrow. And it's going to say you need a minimum of one wheel um, within the item um, that's up here. And then you're also, it's also going to drain one wheel. Now, it doesn't always drain the same as the minimum. For example, if we take a look at the Lesser Tartaric Gem, you'll see that it's going to need a minimum of 60 wheel, and it's going to drain 20. So, um, you know, if you had, say, 45 wheel in there, you have enough that it could drain it, but you don't have enough to meet the minimum spec, so it will not craft um, the item. 
So once you have all that, I have this demonic wheel with 363. And so we're just going to put it here on the right hand side. And it's going to fill up and pow. We got our petty petty tartaric gem. Now while you're here, I would suggest that you go ahead and craft yourself a second one. Uh, because you are going to want two of them to get started. And the reason I say that is because the next thing that you're going to want to craft is your sentient sword. Now sentient gear, you have sentient armor and sentient weapons. These are kind of a new um, weapon type. And they get boosted depending on the amount of will that you have and the type of will that you have. So you'll notice here that there is like some... You know, other than just the raw wheel, there's also um, destructive, there's corrosive, there's vengeful, and there's steadfast. And we'll get into that stuff, how to get it and how to use it um, a little bit later in the video. But just keep in mind that this stuff is affected by the type of wheel that you have. Um, so what you're going to do is just throw yourself an iron sword and a tartaric gem into here, and it's going to run. You do need something in this slot, but it's not actually going to require any minimum wheel or drain any wheel. So if I wanted to, I could even put this .06 that's pretty much useless aside from, um, you know, crafting things like this. I could throw that in there and still make the sentient sword no problem. So why do you want the sentient sword? I mean, the damage on it isn't all that great, but what it's for is if you have a tartaric gem on you and you go out and you kill a mob with this sword, you'll notice that now it has .8 will quality. And it's going to charge up your tartaric gems. If I kill a couple more spiders here, we're now up to 2.4 wheel. And this can store up to, I believe, 60 in the petties um, <clears throat> before you're gonna, going to need to upgrade it. But now, in addition, if you don't have a Tartaric Gem in your inventory, that's okay. Because if you kill a mob with this Sentient Sword, it's going to drop a Demonic Wheel for you. Now, in addition, if we take our Tartaric Gem, um, it currently has 3.2 wheel in it. And we were to pick up any demonic wheels you'll notice that instead of picking them up it just goes straight into the petty tartaric so if you have any wheel left over um, from when you were uh, you know maybe grinding up wheels or anything like that just go ahead and combine them into your tartaric gym so um, and that way you can boost the amount that that has in it fairly quickly now in addition as you upgrade these do keep in mind that you're going to need both a Tartaric Gem with the Minimum and the Drain available, and you're going to need the previous tier in order to upgrade. So you are going to want to kind of make a few extras to, to follow up behind um, as you go. Because of course, like say for example we wanted to make the Common Tartaric Gem, we're probably going to need our Lesser that we made because we need a minimum of 240 wheel, and it's going to drain 50. So, um, but then in addition, we also need another lesser. So you are going to have to craft those um, as you go up and, you know, have some extras on hand. And by the way, if you guys have any questions about wheel or anything, um, I mean, that pretty much covers the standard basics of wheel and how you're going to work your way up. Um, you just kind of craft those as you go up and they're going to be able to store more. But if you guys have any questions, you know, do let me know and I'll do my best to help you out. Now, next up, we have the alchemy table. Now, this um, it's fairly easy to craft. I think it just takes a tier 1 altar, a tier 1 blood orb, which by the way, this is a really nice feature. They added the tier there, and that just tells you what kind of minimum tier blood orb that you have to have. So that's what that tier means. Um, you'll see it on anything that requires a blood orb um, to craft. But the alchemy table pretty much, this is what alchemy used to be in blood magic. And there's no, currently there's no demon summoning or any of that. Um, and alchemy's just been combined all into the table. Now, what you're going to use it for is, for example, this coal sand. Um, you can create it with two coal and one piece of flint to get you four pieces of that coal sand. And just a heads up, certain things in this mod haven't been fully fleshed out. I know the wheel system, there's still going to be a lot more that's added to that over time. Um, in addition, I believe alchemy is probably going to be one of those things. Um, <clears throat> you know, you can make odd and end little things um, like the coal powder or the coal sand, um, which this coal sand can then be used as like a coal powder, um, you know, with other mods. And then you can use it to make like the explosive powder and the saltpeter and the basic cutting fluid and stuff. Um, I'm not going to get too much into that. Basically, you can create gunpowder and little things like that um, with the alchemy. There's nothing too in-depth that I know of that you need for like mod progression or anything like that um, within the alchemy station. And one other thing that you can do with the alchemy table is you can create flasks. 
Um, so for example, if you make one of these potion flasks, um, which are fairly easy to craft, um, they just require a water bottle, nether wart, redstone, and glowstone to get you a flask. And then you can combine them with different things like gas tier is going to get you regeneration. A gas tier and a lengthening catalyst is going to get you re uh, regeneration for one minute and so on. You can get regeneration too with a power catalyst. Um, you know, for those of you that have done the blood magic, um, which I'm assuming with this video that you guys are familiar with blood magic, this is just an update video. Um, but the catalysts and stuff are still there, um, but you're not forced to do alchemy for progression at the moment. So Now next up we have some miscellaneous items um, that are added within the mod before we move into any more of the advanced mechanics. First off we have this Tome of Peridia. Oh my gosh, all this rain. And basically what this does is, let's say for example, alright, so I pop some XP and I'm now level 56. So what I can do is I can shift, right click, and it will take a level at a time from me. And so I've taken all of my XP, and you'll notice that I have 7,336 XP in there, and I'm level 56. Now if I want to get that XP back out, I can just right click and get a level at a time with this book. And this book, by the way, is crafted with just a couple imbued slates, an enchanted book, uh, a block of lapis, you need a tier 3 blood orb, and then some golden string. Um, to get that. Now in addition there is this Inspectress, um, Inspectoris Scandalum and this may have been around but I don't recall this book um, but basically you just throw a book in a tier 1 altar to get this and um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna shift right click the air and you can see it says set to tier 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 so let's say we want to set it to a tier 5 and right click our blood altar or shift right click sorry um, and it's going to plot out the area that it requires, um, show you what you need. These stone bricks here, um, of course, can be replaced with any block. And um, it's going to also show you the runes that you need um, in addition to that. Of course, they're under the ground, but um, that's how that works. Now, there's also two new chess pieces, and these are, these are gauged for lower um, progression blood mages, I believe is the way I feel about them. Um, but you have the Coat of Arms and the Blood Letters Pack. So first up, let's check out the Coat of Arms. So let's go into Survival and we'll throw down, say, a Spider. And if I'm wearing this Coat of Arms and I was to kill a Spider, you'll notice that this Coat of Arms now has 290 life points in it. And so if I killed another Spider, now we have 579. Um, basically the way this works is as you kill monsters, this is going to get life essence in it and then what you can do if you want to empty this out is just run up to a blood altar, shift right click and it's going to take all the life points out of it and put them into your altar. So it's just a way to gather some life points, um, especially early game um, while you're just running around killing mobs and doing you know normal stuff. And this stuff is very easy to craft just requiring a blank slate and then just some basic items there. Now, in addition, there's this Blood Letters pack. This one I don't personally like as much, but I'm more of a mob sacrifice kind of person than a self-sacrifice. But the Blood Letters pack, you can just throw this on, and as you run around the world, it's going to tick your health down to about five hearts. And you'll notice that as it does, we're building up 100 life points per heart, or per half heart, um, in the Blood Letters pack. And this works the same way. You can just take this and go over to your altar, and shift right click that blood in there and it's going to take it from the blood letters pack and put it into your altar. Now next up let's talk about this armor, this living armor that I'm wearing. Um, in order to get this what you're going to need to do, it's pretty much like the bound armor um, used to be, you also have the bound blade but you'll notice that there's a recipe here, diamond sword with binding reagent uh, the way this works is you're going to need to get yourself some arcane ashes. These are crafted with just some bone meal, redstone, coal, and gunpowder in a hellfire forge. And they don't require any wheel, and they're not going to drain any wheel. And then to make the, the, it all pretty much works the same way as far as how you set up the alchemy array. So I'm just going to make, for example, um, the, uh, the bound sword, for example. Um... So the way that works, let's grab a diamond sword, and you're also going to need some of this binding reagent. Now this stuff does require a bit of wheel. It takes redstone, glowstone, gunpowder, and gold nuggets with 400 minimum wheel, and it's going to drain 10. 
And the way this works is you'll sit down, you'll right click your Arcane Ashes, and then you need to right click your Binding Reagent. And you're going to get this big um, circle area. <laughs> and then right click it with a Diamond Sword, and it's going it's to activate it. It's going to know that you want to bind that sword and create a bound blade with it. So you're going to get a little bit of a light show and these, all these um, circles are going to move in and out. When they start coming towards the middle, you know it's just about done. And that's, of course, going to get you your bound blade, which still works the exact same way as it used to. Um, it is kind of the graphics bug. Like, I've got it turned off right now, but um, I have to unselect it and then reselect it for that to update. But anyway, that's how you make your bound equipment. And the living armor, this only requires iron armor. It's fairly cheap to make, of course. Um, of course, you do need the wheel and everything um, built up a little bit. But as you wear this armor and you run around and you do things, you're going to get these upgrades. And so, for example, if I was to grab some experience, you'll notice it just says upgrade acquired. And now I have experience level 8 on my chest piece. And the way that works is the more you do certain things, and you can actually look here, all of these uh, training bracelets here, minus the first one, this is just a blank one, but all of these training bracelets represent a skill that you can get on your, ch on your armor. And this is going to be across all pieces. You'll notice the living helmet and legs and boots don't have anything on there. They don't even have upgrade points or any of that. It's only going to apply to your chest plate, but you have to be wearing the full set in order to get these... Uh, these buffs to come up, these upgrades to it. And um, as you do the same things over and over again, you're going to get these upgrades. So if you wanted to, you could sit and just keep stabbing yourself with a dagger while wearing this armor, and you're going to get a buff that whenever you stab yourself, you get more life points. But you have to be careful because you'll notice that it says, um, uh, right now I have 196 out of 200 upgrade points. So I'm limited in the amount of upgrades that I can get, and each of these upgrades will take so many points and the higher the level is so for example experienced level eight required more um, upgrade points than say strong legs level two would the higher level stuff that you have of course the less things that you're going to have in total um, now there is a way to get this stuff off of um, your armor but you are going to have to be at least up to a tier four altar in order to do so and what you're going to want to do is use your Ritual Diviner and find yourself the Ritual Sound of the Cleansing Soul. And then we'll just put our Master Ritual Stone down. And what's really nice is you can actually see what the Ritual is going to look like before you activate it. And then, of course, we'll just let it place all of our Ritual Stones for us. But the reason that you're going to need at least a Tier 4 Altar is because this one does require Dusk Runes. So anyway, once you have that, let's go ahead and activate it. And it's going to say a rush of energy flows through the ritual. And then whenever you activate it, you will get all of these living armor upgrade tomes. So, um, then what you can do is you can just take, and say you want to use, say you want quick feet level 1 on your armor. You can just right click it, it's going to say upgrade acquired, and now I have quick feet level 1. Now in addition to that, if I were to get myself an anvil, and say I wanted to upgrade this quick feet and I have myself another Quick Feet Level 1, I can combine these just like I would a Spell Tome or a Sword or something like that to get Quick Feet Level 2. And of course that only works for same type um, Upgrade Tomes, so I'll just keep that in mind. But that is basically how the Living Armor works. And keep in mind that this um, Living Armor does have durability. There is a repairing, um, I can't remember, there it is, uh, there is a repairing um, skill that you can get on your armor that I believe you get from repairing it. So, uh, but by default there, you know, it is going to require um, a durability, so you are going to want to keep an eye on that.